Happy October! Baron here to give you this week's news wrap-up. So let us dig in. Mordow has pushed out patch 7 and 8 this week, balancing weapons and adding in the long-awaited Messer. There is still much more patching and balancing to be done, but we have confirmed animations are going to be reworked to allow for more accurate readability on wind-ups and release phases of attacks. Clashing has been tweaked to allow for more precise chambering and reposts. Check the links below to see the changes in detail and a link to the official Mordhau Discord. Total War Arena has launched a huge patch on Tuesday, and we see a variety of additions to the game. UI has been reworked, account levels and titles have been added, and some more tweaks to balancing have been made. Wargaming and Creative Assembly have also come together for an Ask Us Anything event. The event concluded on Tuesday, and many community questions were answered. Check out the questions and answers for yourself in the Reddit link below. We can expect more balancing before the closed beta comes to its end. Creative Assembly clarified that the work on the Japanese faction has just started but won't be the next faction to be introduced into the actual game itself. Other factions are closer to release. Teased in the UI, we see clans as a title option. Also, in-game awards are displayed for events such as nuke damage, unit destroyed and teams saved. The developers have also announced that they will be bringing in a point-based scoreboard rather than one based on kills and deaths alone. Of Kings and Men has pushed out the Derry Military to the live build. Already we see battles for territory ensuing. Clans are engaging for total control of the land. If you are looking to join one of the existing clans, the clans are recruiting in the official Of Kings and Men Discord in the link below. In fact, exploration has been added in the wilderness. The plan is to parallel Derry Military development with the wilderness to add on as it progresses. The new game mode will allow for single-player squads or clans to make their way into the world. Interactions will be unique and more types of encounters will be added to allow for a more lifelike experience. No plans for player versus player in the wilderness currently, but perhaps later down the road. More is also being added into the game. You can now sheath swords to allow more immersion for the players and more NPCs are being added. For a more in-depth looks, check out the exploration dev frame in the link below. As you can see, there is now a new website design in place. So, take a gander. For Honor has released patch notes regarding some recent rebalancing and fixes. We see that Shinobi class stamina has been reduced, while Centurion range has been decreased, with different tweaks to recovery time and stamina drain reduction. Host advantage has been patched, and several general balancing mixed with repairs for other classes. For the full patch notes, check the link below. An update to the Rise of Legends tournaments. Congratulations to Alkernakin, Bodrat, Scorebrand, and Vinx. Team E. For the grand prize of $200. Also worth mentioning, the Warrior's Den is today at 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Check out the For Honor Legends Discord for more. Mountain Blade Bannerlord has published their newest dev blog, 
We dive deep into their more in-depth explanation on how influence will work in the campaign mode. From reducing army upkeep to gaining favor from other lords. Check it out yourself in the link below. And that's this week's wrap up. Please feel free to give us any feedback, like, share and subscribe.